follow me to the church. Welcome in everybody to From the Chamber. I'm Lisa. And I'm Kate. And joining us today is the delightful Jana J. Jana, you look beautiful. Well, thank you, Lisa. You do. I think you look gorgeous. I walked down here and I was like, who is that body? (laughs) And Kate's not so bad (laughs) either. He's not too bad himself. (laughs) And how about this crew? And we even have (laughs) Lisa. (laughs) Teresa Knox. I know. Yeah, we have a bartender here too, Jana, just in case you needed to know that. (laughs) Welcome. This is amazing. Thank you. Most people know you as like a country fiddler. The lady with the blue fiddle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah, you E-R. have you have all kinds of training. You, I mean, you spent time in uh, Austria, Vienna. Yeah. Uh-huh. Vienna Academy of Music. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, that was it's been wonderful. I started playing uh, when I was two. Yeah, you had a little wow. tiny, my, <laughs> little, little tiny eight size. Do you still have it? Yes. My, I'm not here today, yeah. but my folks went to Juilliard. So, yeah, that's you know, right. yeah, they said I was going to, my dad, you know, I was going to be his child prodigy. Well, and, uh, and it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he wasn't into country, though. He wanted, he wanted me to do class. I had to do an hour a day from age two. So my mom broke it up oh, into, oh, oh, it was a lot for a two-year-old. <laughs> and, and he'd give me a lesson every day. That's all I really remember about it is the lesson every day. I ended up crying every uh-huh. time. But uh-huh. my mom kept me going. Uh-huh. And uh, her dad was a champion fiddle player. Yeah. So, uh, you know, she'd help me do a few little fun things on the violin. And and then um, we went to live with my grandparents. My folks were divorced when I was about seven. Uh And granddaddy taught me all these fun fiddle tunes. And so I'd play some difficult concerto, you know, for a a Lions Club luncheon or something like that. And uh, polite applause. They thought that was great. And then I'd play one of granddaddy's hoedowns for an encore. Then they really went nuts. (laughs) Brought the house down. (laughs) So I learned at an early age, um, you know, what people enjoyed and yeah. i think they liked the contrast yeah, yeah so sure. you got know, this sophisticated looking gal that's beautiful well. and she just starts <laughs> ripping it. away well it was uh you know classical and some little concerto or something and then and then it was such a change of pace and they'd start clapping and stomping <laughs> and you know you'd feel that it's so rhythmic yeah and um so now in my shows, I thought, well, that contrast is kind of a good idea. Yeah. So now in my country shows, I'll do Flight of the Bumblebee or Chardosh yeah. or mm-hmm. something like that that's kind of light classical and kind of spectacular. <laughs> and, <laughs> and everybody just, oh, that's really good, you know, because of the contrast. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I've, I've used both, and I love soloing with symphonies because I can do both. You know, I can talk their language and... And then play some solos. With Absolutely. Them. Did it's you fun. ever get any other training other than like you know within family? Well, yeah, you did. Yeah, you I lessons. studied with uh, the concert mistress of the Boise Philharmonic for yes. quite a few years, right. and then I well, I was always studying classically, and then uh, went to Interlaken, got a scholarship to Interlaken, which is still going. Interlaken. Oh yeah, yeah. In in, in Michigan, it's a very. Um, fine uh camp music camp uh-huh. and they have a school too but Absolutely. this was the the summer music camp and oh, playing okay. about eight hours that was actually <laughs> i was in high school i think i could play anything at that time because wow. i was doing so much and it was just like so easy <laughs> and uh um but interlochen was great and then i went to international string congress in puerto rico that was a scholarship roy and joanna harris the the conductor and and the uh, composer. And then I went to uh, Vienna and studied for a year more. And Vienna is very close to my heart. Yeah. That was really, really something. So, you know, I've had all that yeah. training. Well, what happened the, in Vienna, Janet? And what, what made it so close to your heart? Well, it was just, you know, well, I did a few of my little fiddle tunes on the side, and that kind of, they were definitely all classical at that <laughs> time. And so that, it was like shock at first. <laughs> and, then, and then they wanted to learn how to do that. And it was just, I had um, Edward Melkus was the instructor at the that I worked with, and um, he was into Bach, and I did all the Bach 
partitas and sonatas. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just, it was a very revitalizing time. And Vienna itself is absolutely. Yes. Go to Vienna if you don't have <laughs> anything else on your bucket Music list. Music is everywhere. Get to thing. Vienna. Oh, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's they had a little corner. magazine, Vasus Los and Bean, what's mm -hmm. happening in Vienna. And you, you just can't get enough. I mean, you can't do it all. <laughs> right. I saw Itzhak Perlman. I saw Misha Elman, the uh, Vienna Philharmonic. Um, Karian was conducting. I mean, it was just on and on and on. And they had like operas and operettas and symphonies and solo recitals, everything going on in these beautiful halls with chandeliers. And I actually went back to Vienna when I got my house at the lake and bought a chandelier on Kärntnerstrasse. <laughs> wow. And well, I, I didn't intend to, but I wanted to <laughs> look drawn. at them. You were drawn to it. Yeah, I wanted to look <laughs> at these beautiful things. And, and the, every concert hall, you know, that was my memory, how beautiful the concert halls were. Very, very ornate, you know, like Schönbrunn Palace and the gold leaf and all that. And um, and all these beautiful chandeliers. So I went to Kärntnerstrasse and just looking and I said, gosh, you know, asked about prices. I said, that's okay, you know, I live in the United States. There's no way. Oh, we ship. Yeah. <laughs> we ship. I said, not this big, huge chandelier. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, we ship. <laughs> yes, we wrap every little piece, you know. <laughs> By gosh, it happened. Yeah. You still have yeah, it? I still have it. It's at my house at the lake right in the stairwell, which is just gorgeous. Yeah. So. But it's a... You know, it's meaningful to me. It's yeah, not absolutely. just that it's beautiful. Uh -huh. It's mm -hmm. it has a lot of meaning. So no yeah. kidding. What a what a story behind yeah. all that. And fun. you mentioned how uh, so you've always been interested in the classical and the fiddle. And it seems like a lot of times people seem to stick to one side or the other of that coin. But so what do you think the reason is why people do that? Why is there that kind of separation usually? Yeah. Or, well, you know, there's a lot less separation now than there used to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you don't, it, it's very easy to say um, <clears throat> about any genre of music. Yeah. You know, I like bluegrass. I don't right. like drums. Yeah. You know, I like uh, country, but it has to be traditional. Yeah. And I don't want drums or I don't want steel guitar or I don't want whatever it is. And I'm much more broad minded. Yeah. Uh, it has definitely. to be good music for that genre yeah but as long as it's good music i mean my gosh there's so much fabulous music we need to appreciate so i've just never gotten into that um that i have to be a purist in one way or yeah. another but that's what i that's what w was confronting me in vienna for instance right when mm. i'd play a fiddle tune you know it was like <laughs> oh well Oh, okay. Yeah, what's that? You know, they just, <laughs> they didn't compute. I was yeah. total disconnect until they heard a little more. And then I, I think I related it to some of their folk music. Yeah. Oh, okay. And bar talk. And then, oh, yeah, well, would you show me how you did that? <laughs> some bowing or something. Uh -huh. And that's what I do when I, I uh, do a lot of chamber music um, workshops. Uh -huh. And I will do a fiddle workshop for mm -hmm. them. So here we are playing Bach and Brahms and Beethoven and, and Shostakovich. And <clears throat> and I have to earn my position. Yeah. They have to know that I can do that. Yeah. yeah. And then... So you lead I'll, with that, yeah. Yeah, so I'll do that for a couple of days and then... Uh, or they might already know me, but I mean, if I'm new to the group, I'll just... Uh, until I get my... my uh, credentials <laughs> with them <laughs> yeah. and then i'll do some little fiddle and they invariably oh yeah why well, don't you do that well, can you show me that <laughs> believe yeah. me when you leave when you walk away they're doing it <laughs> <laughs> they're trying. trying yeah trying. <laughs> but, but you know a lot of times it's because of um they don't know right it's really yeah, they don't sure. know what they don't know they yeah. don't know what they don't know that that's right and they just think well it's bad and yeah, they may want to learn, want to improvise, uh, but they don't know how to improvise. And so, oh, that's just fiddling. Yeah. You know, something like that until they really get hooked on on trying it. And I love that. I love yeah. to be the one that exposes them to. Yeah. yeah. It, or inspires how you, uh, or whatever. And I, also, I love how you mentioned how there's, there's so much more music to be enjoyed out there if you can yes. learn to appreciate it. Because oh. you have to listen to all the different music with different ears. 
Right. You know, if you come at it, you know, fiddle from that classical perspective, you know, you may not think it's good, but it's only because you're expecting a, to get a certain thing out of it. Right. But you have to put on those different ears and, and realize what's good about that kind right. of music and why it is that way. And you have to try it yourself. Yeah. And then you realize how, you know, that you really can do it, but it takes some effort to learn yeah. how to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, and you, instead of downplaying it. You brought <laughs> an exceptional Fiddle, violin. This is violin. It's, it's, it's either. Tell, let us know. Yeah. Well, what's it, the difference? I, I talk, when I talk to you, I call it a fiddle. But yeah. I, and you've given me permission. It's violin or yeah, fiddle. Right. No difference, really. Well, what is the difference? Okay. Kate. I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it, it's my most asked question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's the difference between the fiddle and the violin? And I always, uh, you know, demonstrate to show. But I would not play this in a country band because it's not i can't plug in i can't keep up with the drums and the electric guitar and that's what the blue violin is for yes and that's what they gave me on hee-haw the blue fiddle yeah and i just was so shocked i thought "Ooh, a blue violin (laughs) it was like like the me exposing the people in Vienna to fiddle music (laughs) a blue violin electric and i was pretty much a purist at that time as far as the instrument went Mm -hmm. and this is my pride and joy tell us about it well this is um it's a finoli violin an italian violin made in milan and milan you know is only about 30 miles from cremona where they make the strats so here it is yeah yeah Yeah. the whole area of northern italy there this big forest area forested area Mm -hmm. What made the Strads so special, you know, they had the wood from the forest, the cured wood, and then it was their varnish, and of course the way the violins made. But so in my mind, (laughs) this this was made in Milan in 1750. Wow. The same time period for the Stradivarius, the really good Strads. And um, so it's my Strad. (laughs) But uh, my dad... Who, uh, the one who went to Juilliard, he was a music teacher and a performer in the L.A. area, and he started dealing in fine violins. So um, this was my prize. He gave me this. Yeah. Well, he gave me this for a price. No, did he, he didn't actually like give it to you. I had to pay him for this, or I couldn't believe it. You bought it from your dad. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he gave me a good price, so yeah. we'll put it that way. But but it has been wonderful for me. And it has a, you know, it's made in 1750. It's doing pretty well. Yeah. But it has a few cracks, <laughs> mm-hmm. but they're not getting worse. And um, so we're watching this one. And the sound post is right there. So we're kind of watching that. But um, I won't let anybody touch it no. because I like <laughs> I, I like the sound you, yeah. of it for chamber music. It has a good acoustic sound. So, Jana, so, what is something like that worth? Oh, whatever you want to <laughs> pay, pay for it. Um, Have you ever had it appraised? Is it- oh, not for a long time. I've had it for, you know, 40 years or yeah. something. Um, so I don't know what it would appraise for. But you, you know, prices? the strads are millions. Right. This is not millions, but it's probably up there a way. To me, it's worth a million. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so and you that's still play the, it. It's not just it doesn't just sit around, right? Oh no. This this is what I use most of the time for fiddle contests, my fiddle camps, my um uh whatever I'm I'm doing for the chamber music or the workshops. I just use this. The blue fiddle, which I could reach. We'll probably, get it. We'll, yeah, we'll help you get is, that in um, a second. Is um an electric violin. So when you plug that in, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you can Whale on You're that. on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can play with anybody as loud as they want to is be. This, and, you are, speaking of the contest and all that, Janet, yeah. you are like, well, how many times did you win the national world oh. championship? Well, or? I haven't been in contests for years and years, but I, a couple of big wins at State of California and the national couple times. And that that's enough. I mean, sure. you know, you can get... But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but what I've done is... Um, Put on contests now. Oh, for, do you? Yeah. yeah. So we have three festivals we do in Grove on the lake. I've heard of and these, And we yes. do, yeah, we, it's uh, grandlakefestivals.com. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and uh, we do a June big fiddle fest. And um, 
you know, music fest, different bands, all acoustic, acoustic, and um, not electric. And, uh, and, and that's been very successful. We've done that about 20 years. And then in July, we do a Cajun festival, 4th of July. And that's just because I love Cajun music. <laughs> yeah. We've had Doug Kershaw, and we've had the guys from Louisiana every year, Chris Miller and Bayou Roots. And, you know, I'll play ch- Cajun or get out there and do the washboard, <laughs> Cajun washboard. Just have fun with it. You know, it's really fun. And then uh, in the fall, Labor Day weekend, we do a, I do a fiddle camp. And that's what my one fiddle camp and music fest, that's my one time in the year I really teach. Oh, and okay. I have about 20 assistants, uh, mm-hmm. teachers, really good teachers. And um, Do the students come from where, everywhere or what? Yeah, they're, they're mostly, you know, generally in the area. But this last time, just um, Labor Day, this last, past Labor Day weekend, we had Colorado. We had uh, Connecticut. We had so they California. We oh, so yeah. we had some far flung places, but basically the core. We get about a hundred people. This year was down a bit because of COVID, and sure. we knew it would be, but it was just <laughs> right because we could distance and all that. Yeah. So um, anyway, it's it's fun to share, and that's what my whole deal is now. I love sharing, and I love performing. And, of course, I'm still working. I'm still a working girl. Yes. Oh, yeah. Get into all these things like lake houses and projects and, <laughs> and studio. Yeah. I, I need to get back into David's studio. <laughs> he and, loves to see you coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Harwelden Mansion, located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is your choice for a luxury destination bed and breakfast. Stunning and unique, beautifully decorated suites await you for your business or leisure. Constructed in the 1920s, the historic Harwelden Mansion boasts elegant and comfortable accommodations. Egyptian cotton towels, Peacock Alley linens, and Hermes bath products. All rooms stocked with complimentary beer, wine, tea, coffee, and soda. And you'll appreciate the welcome snack and turndown service, minutes from the world-renowned gathering place. Book your overnight stay at harweldenmansion.com. That's H-A-R-W-E-L-D-E-N mansion.com. So it sounds like, you know, you were kind of just given a violin as a little kid. Uh, as years have gone by, have you ever considered other instruments? Have anything drawn your attention on? Or what about the violin? It's just so special for you as far as expressing yourself. Well, I'm better at the violin. Well, than, yeah. <laughs> That's what you your know, dad told you. <laughs> yeah. It, I've grown up with it. So it's kind of like another la- my language. You yeah. Know? But I do play piano. Oh, okay. And I play all the string instruments. I have a lot of fun on the acoustic bass, you know, the oh, yeah. upright bass. <laughs> And that was my first job, actually, my first professional job. Was the job. upright bass? No, it oh. was an electric bass. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Ann Jones and her Western sweethearts. <laughs> True. <laughs> when I was 14, my wow. mother sent me on the road with <laughs> Ann Jones and her Western sweethearts. The big bus, the husband, Huey, was the bus driver, and it was a great all-girl band. And, uh, you know, my mom was very trusting. She was. <laughs> yeah. They but, were in those days, though. But it was, yes. Yeah. It, but it was really a wonderful experience. We played NCO clubs all over the What's South. NCO, Jana? Um, non-commissioned officer oh, clubs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I was, you know, underage, so I had to only come in to play and then go back to the bus. I couldn't hang around in there. And, but it was a great band, and they hired me to play fiddle, and then I ended up, they, the drummer left, and so I had to Don't, play drums. Did, she started playing. <laughs> yeah, so I played drums, <laughs> and then, and then the bass player got married, so I played bass, <laughs> and I'd always do fiddle specialty numbers, but by gosh, that... Uh, I have a lot of respect for drummers that roll on the steel guitar rag. I never did get that very good. (laughs) (laughs) So I was really glad when they put me on bass, but 
but it was a good experience. So you, know? you played all kinds of instruments. Yeah. <laughs> so I have dabbled in that, but I'll stick to the fiddle. <laughs> Thank you very much. And so violin. you got a little bit of taste of going on the road and performing and stuff. Did that I did. was that something that you're just like, okay, this is what I have to do now? Or no, uh, <laughs> I, I was a junior in high school. Oh, okay. and I had a boyfriend, uh -huh. and I and I didn't want to go. Oh wow! I didn't want to go at all. <laughs> And they were playing uh, just south of Twin Falls, Idaho, at uh, oh, in in Nevada, Jackpot, Nevada. And so, you know, Mom said, "No, come here, them. I want them to meet you." Da 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 da. You know, mothers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I met them, and I yeah, goodbye. And Mom said, "No, well, they really like your playing." I played a couple of tunes for them. Next thing I knew, we were in the car. They had left. They'd left for a couple of days. I thought, thank goodness. And uh, they were nice people, but I didn't want to do that. Uh -huh. So, uh, and interrupt school and leave my boyfriend. <laughs> so <laughs> next thing I know, we're in a car driving to Portland. I said, Mom, what is this all about? Well, that's where they're based, out of Portland. And we'll just see if you if you like them, spend a little time and see what, <laughs> I said, Mom, I really don't know about that. Anyway, she left me there <laughs> with the band. Wow. Yeah. And it turned out to be great. I love the yeah. girls. I'm still in contact with a couple of them. Are you? Yeah, I am. Good. Your mom so, was visioning you settling down with a boy and never touching the fiddle again. <laughs> <wasn't she? laughs> that was it. She wanted to get me out of his clutches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it was uh, it was a good experience, a really. And then years later, I hadn't even thought about you know touring on a bus. But guess what happened? I got my bus, my first bus. I bought the bus. I knew exactly how to do it, how <laughs> you make things easy. And we had the, you know, we had outfits that we'd choose every night, and we had our bunks, and we had our. We would always play the job and then go eat steak and then drive to the next place and check into the motel. And that happened to be our routine. How long I did that go with on? My band. Well, the it's... Ann Jones and her Western Sweethearts was just one summer. Right. I was determined to but get your back bus. to school. Oh, my <laughs> bus. No, I still have my bus. I know. Not because my original bus. as a young bus. girl, I've seen that bus around Tulsa for yeah. years. Yeah. Well, first <laughs> and we had... And I was had... wondering, who's this Jana J? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first we had a... a a Silver Eagle six, 1966 bus. Yeah. Pretty soon you couldn't get parts for that. So I was looking around for buses. I bought Roy Clark's bus. Yep. And so Roy's bus, I still have, uh, had it parked out, you know, on 71st Street outside Yes, my exactly. House. Yeah. Yes, that's where I saw <laughs> but it. But my mostly. neighbor, my new neighbor said, uh-uh, you can't do that. And they changed the road so it was kind of a little closer into the neighborhood. And I said, okay, well, it's time to garage it anyway. And protect the paint yeah. so uh i have roy clark's bus and wow you can you you may have that if you <laughs> it's, have it's a for sale <laughs> <laughs> right. well not not formally but one of these days i'll sell it yeah. you know to somebody who will appreciate it so speaking of roy clark here you go you're doing all these shows and everything and somehow you get connected tell me tell us how you get connected with roy and, with he -haw. yes well um, even before that okay well, I was teaching. Uh, they asked me. I just didn't think I was going to teach either. But I was in Redding, California. My husband had uh, a job teaching Spanish and coaching. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice. And I was excited to live in California. We had been in Idaho and right on the border there of Oregon. Lived in Vail, Vail Oregon. And uh, so they talked me into coming and teaching just part-time so that they could keep this uh, um, string program that a gal was trying to get started. Well, I thought it was started, and I'm leaving my two little kids, yeah, but I agreed to do it, and uh, uh, I had four students. And then the principal said, oh, no problem, we'll get you more students, <laughs> and he sent every problem student. Oh, <laughs> so here they are with their bows and that lasted a few days <laughs> and I said can't do this. So I asked if I could do a program uh, uh, like a little assembly for every one of these seven schools oh, and okay. uh, we ended up with 250 students. Wow. And uh, that was a springboard for a lot of things. Yeah. Redding, California and uh, we had a bluegrass band 
and played out at French Gulch Hotel and just killed them. You know, they just, <laughs> it was just <laughs> fun, fun, fun. They were standing on the tables clapping. And I thought, you know, I think this is fun. Yeah. I'd kind of like to do this because <laughs> I envision yeah. myself, you know, every year another crop, seven schools of uh-huh. n- beginner violins, tuning and squeaking and oh, whatever. Yeah. I thought, I don't know if I might <laughs> burn out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I started exploring and thought, well, I'll give it a year. So I got, uh, I taught part time the first year in school, and then the second time was full time. Second year was full time. And I got a year's leave of absence. And so I was exploring the music business. Yeah. And that's when Buck hired me. Yeah. So, uh, and that's Buck kind Owens. of, yeah, that's kind of a long, long story <laughs> how that happened. But I was wanting to book the bluegrass band. We were playing at Tia Maria's in Sacramento. And you were we wanting to, to book it on Hee Haw? No, I no. was just wanting to book it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't, didn't have any big high goals. I just was wanting to book the bluegrass band because we were good. Yeah. yeah. I thought, gosh, we should be doing this. And we had had such success at the French Gulch Hotel. And I thought, we need to be doing this. Uh-huh. This is fun. And uh, we went to Vegas, and we went to a few places and talked to whoever was in charge. Well, back in Reading, they Buck did two concerts, and uh, they invited me to play. The guy at the caller said, you got to meet this guy. And I said, well, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> finally went, and they said, I met Buck in between shows. And he said, well, why don't you play? Can you play Orange Blossom Special? Yeah. Of course. And well, why don't That's you come like on stairway st- to heaven? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't you come on stage and play a uh, second show? And I said, okay. And I'd never met any of the band or anybody, and I had no idea what it said. I walked on, and he, the band's going hell bent for leather. And I come <laughs> on, and here's Don Rich, like surprised, like, what? <laughs> I plugged in, and we absolutely connected yeah yeah okay. we had a wonderful time that's the only time i met don and, and don he, is rich don is rich he welcomed me with this big smile and and just got into it you know we were playing together and, and will you play will you play and it was so much fun and uh from that point i just kept in touch uh, in touch with buck's manager jack mcfadden to book the bluegrass band Mm -hmm. and uh one day jack called he said we need you down here bakersfield and um buck wants to hear you and i said well the whole band and at that time we were playing at tia maria's and he said no just you i said but the whole band i mean we're working Hmm. and he said well you know just tell them it's important (laughs) so i went to bakersfield by myself left the band without their fiddle player and uh but they did understand for a couple of days but it was a week (laughs) in this hotel and they said jack said you just stay there get room service don't leave i'll bring you whatever you need (laughs) and buckle i'll call you when buck's ready to hear you it was a week he he made you wait a week a week (laughs) and so the the last day i was thinking you know i've got to just go back to reading and so i I said, Jack, I've got to just get a flight and go back to Reading. And he said, well, j- just just wait. Then he called back in about 10 minutes. He said, he said Buck's going to hear you right now. He said, so have all your things. I'd been in this hotel room for a week, you know, uh-huh. everything, so was everywhere. Was Buck Owens a big deal then? Was he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. had all of his huge hits, 26 number one hits in the 60s. Wow. And wow. this was That's like um, the late 70s. Okay. So. Anyway, but I I didn't know all of his music really. I had when I left Reading to go see him, I took my recorder, recorded all of his tunes. And so that whole week, I mean, I knew every Don Rich lick, <laughs> every <laughs> every lick that was on any Buck Owens record, I knew it and every melody. So um, anyway, Jack said, "Yeah, Buck's gonna hear you now. So get all your things together, and I'll be there in ten minutes to check out." I said, Jack, I can't be ready in 10 minutes. He said, I'll be there. You get ready. And, and that was it. And that was how the whole thing with Buck was. Just fast, go, uh-huh. here we are. Anyway, I had a big, long audition. 
and uh, with the buckaroos. The I band started to say, there. were you a buckaroo? Yeah, <laughs> I was the world's first buckaroo. Female, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, Don Rich, you know, was killed in a motorcycle accident not too long after the Reading concert. Oh, wow. And so um, Buck was actually auditioning me to be in the band, which I really was not sure about. <laughs> But, you know, I was still thinking booking the bluegrass band. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they said, okay, here we go. And I thought we're going to the airport. No, we went and got on a plane, and our first job was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. wow. And they bought me clothes and stuff, and that was fast. Yeah. <laughs> Once <laughs> it sure happened, it was. it was really fast. But it was good. And what did your band think back in Reading? What yeah. were they thinking? Like, Oh, yeah. What <laughs> she did went they on think? without us. <laughs> Which? Well, you, they were good without me. I mean, it wasn't that much. I knew they could do it. Yeah. But yeah, they weren't happy about it for a while. But we're still good friends. I had I had them back at one of my festivals. Did you? Yeah. It was a band <laughs> called Clear Creek. Yeah. And um, Martin Sheridan made a violin for me. That Not this violin, but he was the bass player. And, you know, we're still close. I've been lucky with bands and musician mm -hmm. friends long-term friendships you know that yeah. i really appreciate sure. yeah that's really special yeah. that's what it's all about really yes mm -hmm. it is about yeah. relationships isn't yeah it? today's episode is brought to you by the historic harwelden mansion your choice for a luxury bed and breakfast experience and the church studio home to your favorite rock and roll t-shirt the church studio was the Abbey Road of America in the 1970s when Rock and Roll Hall of Famer and Grammy Award winning singer songwriter and musician Leon Russell purchased a 100 year old church and turned it into a recording studio and home office to shelter records. Now under significant renovation to bring it back to a recording studio, entertainment network and community space. Get your church merch fixed today at thechurchstudio.com. Cool gear includes super soft t-shirts, hoodies, hats, journals, stickers, candles and so much more. Thechurchstudio.com. Well, you look beautiful. The instrument looks beautiful. Oh. So why, can you play just a little something on that very unbelievable? Oh, I won't <laughs> no. play anything, really. I'll just, just um, strum it. Or... <laughs> it has to be a perfect fifth, you know. I'll tighten the bow a bit. The bow is good, too. This is an ivory frog. that You can't have those anymore. Really? Made in France. Yeah, I'm not sure I can well, you manage don't, this. Yeah, don't you don't Let's have see. to. Let's see. Well, well, I'll just do tiny little snippet. Okay. This is what I would do like for the classical people uh -huh. that kind of shocked them. <laughs> and then they'd wow. be like, what was that? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> what? And then I do... What? <laughs> so that was the kind of thing that would kind of pique their curio curiosity. Well, let's see. I'm not. I'm not in position. We don't know any better. <laughs> or then uh, that's a little more like fiddling, and then. You, are. you know, wow, that is beautiful. I, that's incredible. That, that's one that I do on my country show, you know, for it's nice with the whole band. And then yeah. it has all that spiccato, you know, that's when you bounce the bow for every time you put your finger down. So, and then you have to get your bow to go bouncing. It's not bouncing real well right now. I'm in kind we of don't a know constricted any position. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't. It's incredible. So wow. that's 
just the kind of bowing. And, uh, and that where the takes bow a bounces. While. Yeah, where yeah. you bounce the bow, and that's then cool. you have to make your fingers go with every little tiny bounce. So yeah. that's kind of a fun one. And then, uh, oh, there are all sorts of different bowings and fun things you can do. But, you know, that the chardash, that sort of thing, a little bit classical. And then you can do the... <laughs> same instrument i know so it's what's incredible. the difference between a fiddle and a violin yeah and you make it just so <laughs> distinct well it is a different style yeah or jazz or bluegrass you know they all have their different unique sounds and feels and and uh you know i love it all yes <laughs> yeah. you're so wonderful at oh, it all too you. so it's you fun. become a buccaneer Buckaroo. 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 Sorry, <laughs> I was the world's first buckarette. And and Buck always said, um, you know, that uh, he felt a little bit religious about it. Or he said, yeah, the Lord took Don Rich from me, but he brought me you. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. So it, it was meaningful. It, yeah. And, you know, I was a girl. It was a band full of men. In fact... I was probably the first country girl instrumentalist. Wow. You know, you have girl singers yeah. in mm -hmm. country music, but no girl instrumentalists. Well, now there are a lot of them. But then it was a very unusual. Yeah. How old were thing. you then? How old was I? I don't know. <laughs> it's none of your business. <laughs> I have no idea. Same no, age I really she is am now, not very good with chronology. And I think it's a it's a it's a mental thing because I forget I have to Figure out my age. I know my the year I was born, but I, I never know how old I am. I know. Yeah, it's better that way. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a lot I, for better like a that year. Way. I was the same age. Or for two years, I was the same age. <laughs> my my grandchildren said, "Nana, y you were thirty nine last year, <laughs> and the year before. I think you're forty two now. <laughs> oh no, it's thirty nine. <laughs> <laughs> that went on for a while until they really got smart. <laughs> yeah. So how did Hee Haw come about, Jana? Well, it was through Buck when Buck hired me. You know, we went on the ride. was part of his band, but he was the co-star of Hee Haw. So uh, when I got to the Hee Haw set, you know, I thought it was a great big show in an auditorium and you'd do the show every week. No. Mm -hmm. No, it was like shot twice a year. Twice a year. Wow, 13 okay. shows each time. June and October, everybody June showed and up and they just knocked it out, right? We did, And, you know, they'd get it so that all of Buck's songs were together, all of Roy's songs were together, all the cast songs were together, all the wow. cornfields were together. Yeah. And then they would tape those and computerize it and just, um, you know, pick what they wanted to do. So we never knew what was <laughs> going to be on the show. We'd have to watch the show because they just picked whatever they wanted, whichever corn field, right. whichever. Right, they, they edited it however they wanted. Was yeah, and something I, was, something I was interested about is like, how is performing like that different than like a concert? Is there anything weird or different about oh, it yeah. that maybe people don't think about? <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, first off, I thought it would be an auditorium, more like a live yeah. show, but it wasn't. Uh -huh. Channel 5, a little studio about this size. They had some hay bales. They had a few people there for cast, you know, that they'd shoot from the back. Yeah. And um, uh, very, very small set. And then they would do the individual songs and, you know, the cornfields and everything, just a very small set. Yeah. In fact, when we're doing our some of our Hee Haw touring shows now, and we take an actual cornfield. Oh, do you? Yeah. Uh -huh. And the cornfield was where, like, guests or the regulars on the show would, like, pop up, pop tell up. jokes, play yeah. music, and, yeah. Or a uh, salute yeah, to your hometown. Yeah. yeah. Population 29, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> And uh, but it was it was a wonderful experience because um, 
I met everybody in the business. Everybody wanted to be on Hee Haw. Yeah, I started to say it yeah. was a huge show. It was. Excuse me, for CBS. They had just lost one of their variety shows or something. Well, it was so, kind of like laughing. They always, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know that they had lost it when that happened. But right. But anyway, they didn't. They it was like a year on CBS and they dropped it. Oh, that's right. So Beviat and Aylesworth put it in syndication. And Gaylord. And it went. And well, Gaylord came later. But anyway, it came. It it went on for twenty six years. Isn't that so, crazy? Wow. Yeah. That's and, a really long time. You know, time. being in syndication, <laughs> they. They did a lot better I uh -huh. mean, financially than even in the, they yeah. would have been CBS, but who would have known? <laughs> but what they did, they did kind of corny jokes, but they were family jokes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the whole family could watch, and it, it just turned out that all of America watched that show. And then they had really, really stellar musical guests. Uh, everybody was on there, you know. Everyone. From, everybody was. And... Um, so, you know, you weren't anybody unless, unless you had a spot on E.R. Uh, but we were on, you know, I was a regular because mm -hmm. I was on all the time and, yeah. and with Buck's band. Didn't do all of the things because Buck wanted to do it all in, you know, two weeks or one week, or whatever we could do to, do to tighten the schedule, and then we'd be gone. Uh -huh. So, uh, it, but it was quite an experience. It was mm -hmm. really good. And, yeah, looking at that camera... <laughs> that camera is very different from playing for an audience yeah, yeah for sure very very different and they turned you they they gave you that famous blue yeah fiddle. they did yeah and you were like no <laughs> was it was it always blue or did you get a choice about hey, different Teresa, colors or Teresa Knox help us Teresa I get you in here somehow we're, or another uh, we try to she get is her in here. so talk cute about her you have to time. just lift that little that lift that it swivels up and just hand that to me. Yeah, this was my... Do you use the same bow? Is it? Yeah, you could use the same bow. Thank you, dear. Do you want to sit here next to me? Yeah, sit sure. down. <laughs> I'm so glad. I got <laughs> Teresa up on stage at Cane's. Did when you? David was there. Yeah. And she it's is horrifying. so no. <laughs> she said it was horrifying. And, and <laughs> it was just our sing along at the end. You did know, you everybody was there. Yes, she did. I think I was lip syncing. I got him in my lips. Uh, yeah. So good. I mean, the crowd. I said, we got to get Teresa not there. Yeah, Teresa, Teresa. Yes. And so I finally got her up there, and they just exploded. Here's yes. Teresa. Yes. I don't think they could hear any of us singing because, you know, it was. <laughs> Who was singing that night? Anne and um, Anne Bell. Gary Busey. Anne yeah. Bell and, yeah. and Gary Busey was there too. Yeah, quite a character. And <laughs> no shenanigans at all. <laughs> no, <None>. yeah, no, <laughs> boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and um, Jennifer was there. Marianne, Jennifer yeah. Marriott. Yeah. Yep. So they had a lot of good vocalists. I think Becky Hobbs got up and joined oh, yes. us and. So it was fun. But, so this blue fiddle is what they wanted you to play on Yeah, Yeehaw. they did, and I was horrified because that <laughs> was my, uh, I was that much of a purist for the instrument. I thought an electric fiddle. Well, I don't have my amp, and I'm not, it's not plugged in. It still is an acoustic violin. I mean, you can get a little bit of sound. But it's not a, you know, it has to be plugged in. Right. Yeah. right. But it works just like a... You know. I can't tell you the number of times I saw this gorgeous, dark-headed girl that looked mm -hmm. like Jacqueline Smith or uh. one of the Charlie's <laughs> Angels on the Hee Haw set playing the, this. Well, yeah, it, was, it was good for me because yeah. people people watched and they recognized it in the airport. Oh, you're the one that plays that blue fiddle. Blue. And <laughs> yeah. They didn't use my name, but they would write to the girl with the blue fiddle. Yeah. And so when it's plugged in, it's a good Marcus Berry. When, when it's plugged in, boy, it will wail. It'll yeah. keep up with anybody. And you still play it. And I still play it for all my shows with, with band members or whatever. So, um, And I've been doing that for many years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a long life I've lived. Yes. <laughs> Lucky so, us. And yeah. it's not over. 110, that's me. Yes. 110, I'll still be playing. <laughs> yes. My mama was uh, 94. Aw, yeah. She wanted to play twin fiddles with me the day she died. 
Wow. And she played, yeah, at 94, she was that's playing amazing. so well. So both parents played fiddle. Both parents were, that's where they met. Yeah, they were at Juilliard. Juilliard. Yeah. yeah. But mom had a little more, uh, you know, she understood a two-year-old can't practice an hour a day. Yeah. My dad was very Germanic, you know, you do this. and <laughs> So, but anyway, that's the magic blue hee-haw fiddle. Yeah. And it is a good violin. It turned out to be okay with you. Yeah. I've, I've hung on to this when I realized it has become my trademark. And people, if I don't play it or I play a white electric fiddle, aren't you the one who played the blue fiddle? I, yeah, <laughs> that's me. Well, where's the blue fiddle? <laughs> they want to see the blue fiddle. Yeah. So you so, can hold that way. Tell too. us about Hee Haw, Jana, if you would. It was it was really, it uh, took a little bit for, you know, the television audience to warm up to it, but man, when they did. Yeah, it was, it was fabulous. And we're still friends, you know, all the, all the, um, well, on our live show now, a lot of them have, past but right. but we have lulu roman who's a fabulous singer buck trent fabulous banjo player misty Rowe, the cute little blonde mm -hmm. with the with the big blue eyes and <laughs> i didn't know what you were gonna say i know <laughs> <laughs> i've used that on the show too with the big <laughs> <laughs> um and uh who else oh we've got Erlene mandrell some of the time oh, and yeah. and um uh then we'll have guests like Kind of like Hee did, T.G. Shepard. Uh, we have some dates booked next year. All of our dates for this year, you know, moved forward. Right. So I don't know. Maybe I can get Teresa to go with us oh, on the gosh. big bus. <laughs> <laughs> Will you take the Roy Clark bus when you go? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if we can. There's one One of the dates is in at the Kuwaitan Casino in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Do you have any idea where that is? It's... It's on the border. I started to say almost Canada. in Canada. Yeah, oh, wow. it is, and there you have to fly into Traverse City, which uh, is which where is the the coldest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> and then Traverse you have to City. drive Traverse City. Well, that's close to Interlaken. Yeah, but we were there in the summer, you know. Yeah. But, but anyway, then you have to drive about three three or four hours clear up to the border. Yeah. So no, I, we won't take the bus on that. One. Yeah. Yeah. It's too far. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll fly and rent a car. But but it is it is wonderful to have this blue fiddle as a part of my um legacy. Legacy yeah. and collection yeah. and so forth. I've got about fifty violins, but I only use this one and that one primarily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're the ones I love. Tell us about some of the characters Katie yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, I, I would just love to get a cool backstory. We've got a few of them listed here. And if could you just g give us a funny story behind each character or, or experience you had with them, like like starting with Buck Owens? The like what's a funny tell. What's a funny yeah, behind us? Yeah, those. well, of course. Let's keep it family friendly here. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, so who did you say you just said? Buck Owens. Well, I already talked about Buck. Didn't yeah, you I? talked about him quite a lot. You had a lot of experience with him. You were married him. to him for a short yeah, time. Yeah, we were yeah. married. How much do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I said, we keep it family friendly. <laughs> no, but Buck was wonderful to me. He really was. He was um, he was a gentleman to me, and he appreciated my talent. And I think we would probably still be together if it hadn't been for contracts and lawyers and families and you know all that. And I thought, yeah, this is too complicated. Why? You know, I mean, it was just contractual it ended up being contractual and i thought yeah i i want to enjoy my life and right. my children and playing and so it was a good time to go out completely on my own and i did um talk to sam lavello the producer and i said well what should i do you know to go out on my he said you call jim halsey <laughs> that's how you got that's it. how i got to tulsa yeah when i went out on my own sam said you call jim halsey See what he and says. he represented a lot of people. A lot of people. He was big. I wish we still had, you know, a big talent agency because that was so vibrant. That time was yeah. so was. vibrant, and yeah. so many musicians were working as much as they possibly could. There you go, Teresa. That's your next project. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she doesn't have enough of them. <laughs> she she is so busy. I know. <laughs> Well, uh, anyway, it was good. You know, Tulsa was good for me. The kids and uh, and I love the community. And then I found out when I bought my lake house, my granddaddy, who is the fiddle player, yeah. they lived right there. They courted right there. Married, got married in Joplin. Really? 
really? my grandmother and he yeah. so you were drawn there it was like coming full circle i still get chills when i really tell the story i believe in that stuff yeah and so when i'd get discouraged like with the big house and the this and the that i got too much stuff mom said <laughs> you just don't let that worry you yeah uh -huh. grandmother and granddaddy would be proud of you oh okay <laughs> that's all it took yeah but uh it is like i came full circle so i appreciate that well stories but yeah it's funny stories name someone uh roy clark yeah oh roy roy is wonderful yeah. you know i when i did move to tulsa i've done lots and lots of shows with roy and uh he what a character and what an opposite of buck oh yeah. you know buck was very organized and he'd have all of his songs ready and <laughs> Uh, some of the instrumentals on tape and he would you know i mean he was ready he'd get there 30 minutes before taping and you know he was ready to roll roy ah he was out <laughs> roaring for a couple nights yeah he'd wander in 30 40 minutes late and sam That's lavello funny. said you know roy you're costing me money you know this is costing six thousand dollars an hour you oh, know wow. when, and and you're costing me money so the next day he came and he came an hour early. He said, "What do you think, Sam?" And he said, oh, "Yeah, I appreciate you being on." He said, "You owe me six thousand dollars." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> but he, Roy was always fun and funny. And there was one show I did with him. It was a um, a little tour for a Christmas show, and it was in November. Actually, we were Kansas or something. And this is, you know, he was already feeling kind of. He'd had a couple surgeries, and right, and. Uh, he played, I had like a 20 minute segment on the show. So right before my segment, he played Silent Night, Spotlight on Roy, all by himself, you know. Ta da da. <laughs> oh. Ta da da. You know, two or three times. Roy he just hit the, yeah, he hit the <laughs> wrong note and, and struggled with getting the note and. And then, and then, I don't know where the band was. They just yeah. kind of, I think they were so shocked, they just kind of left him there to fend for himself. They finally came in and they finished the song. And then uh, I did my 20 minute segment, and then he comes back out and he says, Well, folks. I'm okay now. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, I've had all these surgeries and the medication sometimes takes over and does whatever it wants to. And I, I hit a couple notes there, but I hope you'll forgive me. <laughs> and we'll have a good, con we'll have the good rest of the shot. Oh my gosh, they stood up oh, for him and he was clapped. So gracious, and wasn't he? he was gracious and unassuming. And, uh, you know, he knew how to get the people sure. right there with him. Yeah. And Buck was a great showman, too, on stage. He knew how to get me standing ovations all the time because mm -hmm. it was like, what's she doing, this girl fiddle player? And look at the audience and look <laughs> over there like, what's all this? And they'd get on my side, you know. they'd. So, yeah, they they were fun guys, very different, but they yeah, were both sure. wonderful. You, mean, uh, you mentioned Jim Halsey and yeah. the – talent agency and the vibrancy of that time and stuff is that one so I, I imagine that's one of the major differences you see kind of in the modern music industry versus back then when you got started well you know they have a lot of talent agencies in nashville oh okay <clears throat> and in la and so yeah. forth but you know now it does feel like there is a missing a disconnect yeah i mean you're either carrie underwood demanding one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a show or you're nobody yeah because they don't want to they most of the great big agencies are not so good with the artists like me you know five ten thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars they can same amount of work get a hundred and fifty thousand dollars show so there's a whole all the quote legends you mm -hmm. know like mm -hmm. which all, is you well, I, in that time frame and people who really know how to put on a show, mm -hmm. good artists, good right. talents, and uh, you're kind of, a lot of them are not working yeah. because they don't have the right talent agency. So, you know, Jim Halsey was great in his in his day, yeah. and he's getting up there. I don't think Manisa really wants to put him to work much more, <laughs> but I, I would love to see that happen, a really good talent agency. It helps so many musicians. Right, right. I thought of another funny one. Tell us. Yeah, absolutely. Ju hear junior all samples, you know, yes. BR549. You guys are too young. <laughs> no, no, not me. 
<laughs> I watched it with my grandparents. <laughs> okay. Uh, BR549. Well, he he came uh, with his actual, what do you call the whiskey jug that you put over oh, your the, shoulder? Yeah, the, the jug. Yeah, the jug. Yeah. With yeah. his with his own home brew. And he just came out there on the set with this. And here comes Gracie with him, his wife. And he said, oh, he said, yeah, I got my jug. And he said, I got Gracie. He said, you know, we got three kids, eeny, meeny, miny, and Sam. <laughs> Gracie said, there ain't going to be no more. Oh, and he just <laughs> laugh and take another. I mean, that was Junior. He, he was, was really a real the corn. <laughs> car- really corny and really fun and really down to earth. And he screw up the line well he didn't know how to read at all so he'd try to learn the cue cards didn't know how to read no wow, he did crazy. not yeah <laughs> he'd he'd try to memorize you know what they told him and watch the cue cards so he probably ended up learning to read a little bit but yeah. uh and grandpa grandpa oh grandpa was great his wife was a fiddle player ramona really yeah we did a lot of those, you know, when they'd have six fiddles on the show. Uh-huh. Ramona was always there. Roy Acuff was always there. And, yeah. And Roy and me. Uh-huh. And uh, it, w- it was fun. And he, Roy was another one who really welcomed me. Roy Acuff? You know, no, Roy Clark. Clark. When I came to the Hee Haw set, mm-hmm. and, you know, here I am in Buck's band uh-huh. long before we got married. But here I am in Buck's band and, uh, you know, an unknown quantity. And and I started playing a little bit. And Roy Clark just, yeah, we've got some pictures. You know, he's just all engaged and kind of like uh, Don Rich. It mm-hmm. reminded me a little bit of Don Rich, just welcoming. Yeah. And uh, it, it was really, really heartwarming. I always had a soft spot in my heart for for Roy yeah. Clark, yeah. he was just so good. Well, Gaylord Sartain was on that cast too, wasn't Gaylord? he? Gaylord, oh my it's gosh, he's funny the one to who hear kept him to... say that you know because he'd been in a couple of movies by then. Yes, and to hear him say, you know, oh, I'm not interested, and they started talking about money, and he was like, well, now what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> when do I start? Yeah. <laughs> and he's kind of become a recluse. Maybe you could get him out of his. Well, digs yeah <laughs> he's um uh he was the one who made us laugh before yeah. the camera would camera light would go on he'd make some funny sound or <laughs> tell some funny joke <laughs> or poke somebody or knock them over or whatever it took and just you know he was delightful yeah it, he was definitely an upper yeah <laughs> so how often do you look back at some of those old episodes and and i imagine you're just flooded with memories every time you see yourself playing on there and yeah i'll watch what somebody posts on youtube but i don't watch them other than that yeah. you know uh if there's a fiddle number with the six fiddles or something that intrigues uh-huh. me yeah but to uh i don't know sometimes it's hard to <laughs> I, yes <laughs> but but it is it is good i mean that uh show yeah. made so many careers it for sure did. so yeah, many people absolutely. that it is um it's wonderful to have those shows yeah and i always liked to watch the um the gals the he yeah. what were they called he haw honeys he haw honeys that, that came a little <laughs> yeah. after he haw oh, did it J- just for a year well they had the on he haw they had the jug band and they had what else did they have they had the jug band they had the um uh, the gossipy girls, mm-hmm. and uh, see, I never got to do most of those because I was, you know, you whisked were in and away. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Linda, but, Linda Thompson, Linda Thompson, Thompson. She was married to Elvis. Yes, she was, and yeah. then later Bruce Jenner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then. Who's Bruce Jenner? And then Kate, no, Caitlin. Yeah. 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 And then that didn't work out very well either. I know. <laughs> 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 But it, it was fun. It was a lot. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, and Minnie Pearl. Like oh, she was hilarious. Yeah, and her Minnie Pearl. Husband Henry was funnier than she was. Really? Oh my gosh, he was a <laughs> kind of a quiet cut up. And um, you know, the Million Dollar Band was on there with Floyd Kramer and Chet Atkins and Boots Randolph and Boots. Um, you know, we've done a few shows together and Chet. Uh, Chet and I spoke the same language, kind of yeah. like Roy and I did, because we're both instrumentalists, basically. Mm. 
And I did a lot of shows with Chet. He was wonderful. I had a place on Music Row right up the street from Chet and Ray, uh-huh. and oh, yeah. uh, right up the alley. So we'd you know have morning coffee or go to lunch or whatever. And it was it was really nice. Nashville has changed well, a I lot. Well, I started yeah. It's- it's become pretty commercial and pretty, um, you know, it's 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 different. It's still wonderful, yeah. but it is not the home down feeling like walking up the alley to have a cup of coffee with Ray Stevens. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or or did I've got Chet Atkins piano? He gave me his um, piano okay. that he had on the porch. The little. Um, you know, it's just a short piano, electric piano, but he'd imp- work out his arrangements. And uh-huh. he said, you take this and write a song for me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he I, knew talent. Yeah. When he could, when he saw we, it. Well, we we both appreciated, uh, you know, being instrumentalists. You have, uh, it's a little different cut of cloth. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and with my band, I sing, but I'm not, uh, Barbara Streisand. I'm not a solo singer. Yeah, I'll sing along at like Canes at the end of the show. <laughs> Did you sing, Jana? Oh That's... yeah. Well, don't ask David <laughs> Tea Garden. He's got he's got some horrible tracks. I think that will never be released. But but no, I've done. I've got some albums with singing. Yeah. But primarily, I'm an instrumentalist. You know, that's yeah. my forte. So well. Yeah, yeah. One of the things you know, I've always been just a huge fan of the violin as an instrument, and it seems. Yeah. To me, almost like the most lyrical and most like a voice of any instrument other than a voice. You know, the way you can express yourself. There's so right. many. There's so much nuance to it that That's it's right. hard to get out of a piano or something. You know, just compared to the, the singing. You yeah. know, you really right. can sing with it. You know, which is right. cool. Yeah, I, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> well, apparently, a lot of people do, Jana J. Oh, <laughs> we appreciate you so much coming oh, in today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you too sharing all of this with us. It's real, and Teresa. Real true. Yeah, it's yeah. Really thank you, Teresa, Teresa Knox. We love you. <laughs> This is so wonderful what she's doing, Isn't this uh, the yeah. podcast and and all the developments here in the church. I can hardly wait to Well, the church get studio, the did church. you do any recording there? Did you ever? Just one time with the tractors. Tell us about it. Well, it was cool. I went in and played some fiddle and, and left. <laughs> 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 no, it was with, uh, you know, uh, I can't remember who invited so it was me. Steve it was with it. Steve Ripley. It was with Steve Ripley, but I think... Walt may have Walt Richmond sure. may have talked to uh, Steve about about me coming in and putting on a couple of things and it was great you know they were just a fabulous group yeah and could have done right up there. oh yeah they could have yeah they could <laughs> they could have done um, they could have gone on with number sure. one hits for a long yeah. time but you know they're not really into the touring you have to oh, yeah. everyone hates touring i don't i love it <laughs> do you well because i you know i think at an early age i got a taste for it that was good i love it uh i'm i do, it's just fun i mean you see the country and you're with a nice group of people and you're yeah. doing what you love and i love it miranda lambert loves it too and, and yeah. isn't that funny I, I would think women might like it better i don't Maybe. know i don't know I think Roy maybe we enjoyed like to get it. away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that could be. <laughs> I think I think people are gonna like touring a lot better when it comes back around and people yeah. can do it again. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh, I did like this. Right. Good point. What are you hearing from artists? Or what's everybody doing right now during uh, this pandemic? It's horrible. I know. This is the most horrible year for for musicians I know. and artists and touring artists. I mean, it's just awful. Yeah, for so, sure. So, you know, the festivals I mentioned, we did manage to go ahead and do all of those and put COVID things in place so that and everybody was comfortable. For the most part, yeah. Well, uh, the Cajun Fest was inside, oh, okay. but and the fiddle camp was half and half, but big civic center, so it was okay. And uh, but people are so grateful to have a safe event they can go to, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, and the band was great, and oh, it was just you know a relief from this yeah. cabin fever kind of feeling. Uh-huh. It's a very special. I think we all have a little bit of the COVID blues. Yeah. <laughs> we sure yeah. do. And uh, you know, people are a little more testy. The it's uh, it's hard to 
be patient or be relaxed about things when you just have all Mm -hmm. the and money is so tight for many many people and you know it's just not good so hopefully 2021 will be better yes Mm -hmm. we're all i think so yeah we were all so excited for 2020 if you guys can remember back that far (laughs) i was like oh the 20s it's the new decade swing is going to come back oh swing is going to come (laughs) back It's going to be the 20s. <laughs> Jan and Jay, thank you so much. Thank you. We really yeah, thank appreciate you, so you. We just love it that you we're here today. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Teresa, thanks love for doing bringing it. on thanks. the blue fiddle. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to play that one next yes. time. Plug it in. Yes. Yeah. So for Kate and myself, thanks, everybody, for joining us. We're really glad you were here.